How's it going YouTube? Dylan here. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the truth of learning how to code in 2023. So before we get into it, let's take a look at some background. So if you haven't, if you've been living under a rock over the past year, you know that there is significant layoffs and a significant amount of talent in the market. So if you're in a position where you want to pursue this particular field and that you want to learn how to code, in this video, what we want to do is we want to explore what a good game plan is and how to approach it, right? And also, we're going to talk a little bit about timelines. So let's talk a little bit about background before we get into the more practical stuff. So over the past year, uh, basically, there's been a lot of layoffs. So what's happened is there's a lot of layoffs, and therefore, there's a huge excess of talent in the market. What this has resulted in is... There's less postings, more talent. What does that mean? Well, the employers can be a lot pickier. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna prioritize people with experience. They're gonna prioritize people who already have experience working at like big tech companies or tech companies or any companies for that matter, rather than giving a chance to new grads. Because what you need to understand is you need to understand that new grads, people that are just getting started in the coding field are inherently risky. Why is this? Well, firstly, you have no idea what you're doing. That's the first thing, right? So it's going to take you some time to like ramp up and get going and learn the code base and that kind of thing. And then another thing is there's a high likelihood that you're going to take this, you know, position and you're going to leave with the skill set maybe two, three years later when you're a mid-level dev or so. So companies don't want to take this risk. They rather shortcut the process and go after somebody who already has experience and who already is established in the field. Another reason why a lot of companies are doing this is because simply, you know, senior senior people are hired to solve a vague problem and go about and create a solution, right? Where junior developers have a lot of handholding to do and even mid-level developers for the most part. So mid-level developers can build out, you know, solutions, like small segments of solutions, but they can build the product from like end to end. That's kind of the job of a senior. So given this information, what are you gonna do? Well, it really depends where you are in your journey. Let's just say that you're just getting out of coding bootcamp, you're self-taught, or you're just getting out of school. What I'd do is I'd first get a job. Like when I say get a job, I say get any job. What's the reason for this? Well, as you know, we are in a recession. So you're gonna need money, right? You're gonna need money to pay your bills. You're gonna need money to put food on the table. You're gonna need money to invest in courses and you know different training programs. Yes, you could do YouTube for free. Yes, you could, uh, you could go ahead and do everything on your own free, but that is gonna uh, long cut the time. But what I've learned is, you know, when you invest in your education, it gets you a lot further, a lot quicker. And in the market such as this, you know, you being more competent faster is going to be an asset for you, right? So I'd get a job first. What would I get a job in? Well, during a recession market, you don't really have too many options. There are going to be ideal scenarios, but what you want to do is, whether you're a new grad or whether you're a career changer stick to your current job or find like a low skill job that gives you a lot of flexibility and time that's a low stress you know when I graduated college I basically worked for two years as a lifeguard right so what this allowed me to do was I would work about 15 to 30 minute shifts and then I'd go on break for 15 to 30 minutes. And during that 15 to 30 minutes, I would be studying algorithms. I would be studying programming and stuff like that. Now, if you're in the position that I was a couple of years ago, do I recommend getting your lifeguard certs and stuff like that? As much as there's not a lot of lifeguards nowadays, there is that kind of time sink where you have to take courses. So that's not really the best option for you. So if you're in a position where, you know, you're you're a junior dev, you don't have too many skills, go flip burgers, you know, make a little bit. That would help you to pay your bills, you know, buy courses, that kind of thing, right? For the career changers, what you wanna do is you wanna stick to your job. 
your day job because obviously if you have a family to feed if you won't have like uh if you have kids school that kind of thing then obviously you need to pay for that so you still need that nine to five income what i do is when i was studying for my interviews back in like 2020 and 2021 what i would personally do is i would personally wake up really early in the morning so my shift would start you know your typical nine to five i would wake up at five o'clock in the morning and i would study algorithms from five o'clock to eight o'clock and then i commute to work right and then you do the same thing uh after work which is like 5 30 maybe you go to the gym for an hour or so and then you spend the evening studying programming learning how to code stuff like that that's something that i would do right now what's the reason i'm giving you all this advice here well the reason i'm giving you all this advice is it's going to take a while for you to actually pick up traction most importantly get a job right so if you since I think that this recession will last at least a year, maybe even two years, if you're in a position where, you know, you're considering coding bootcamp, I would reconsider that because of the fact that the whole appeal to coding bootcamp is it helps you to learn how to code quickly. But we're not in a market where speed is necessarily the best thing. So you might as well get a legit degree, a master's degree, going for your second bachelor's, your first bachelor's, rather than going for coding bootcamp because you still have to pay money, right? It's still like $12,000. And if you take an online like master's degree or bachelor's degree, it's gonna be significantly cheaper with a better impact for you, right? So that's what I would do kind of to get you by, right? Invest in your education, make sure you pay the bills. Now let's talk a little bit about what to do uh, when you're actually learning how to code, the physical thing. What I would do if I were you is I pick a language that I like, right? Bonus points if it's one in demand. If you really like Python and you really like JavaScript, great, that's a bonus. But I still stay true to the fact that even though, yes, let's say that you liked C hash, sure, it doesn't have as much uh, as much appeal as JavaScript or Python, but at the same time, if you get good at C hash, for example, you're gonna still get opportunities, right? Like for me, I learned Swift. Swift is not very much in demand. Like it's very, very narrow, but yet I'm still able to gain interviews because I'm specialized, right? And I focused on getting good at Swift rather than jumping between languages, right? So. If you have the option, if you have no preference, yes, go after Python, go after uh, JavaScript, go after AWS. You know, DevOps is pretty much in demand as we start to move more into cloud storage. But at the end of the day, what you need to understand is you need to understand that you need to stick to something and then uh, get it out such that you're competent at it. How do you know you're competent at it? Well. If you can take an interview, you can go from uh, beginning to end without any interruptions. So I'm going to give you a swift example where if you can parse a JSON, if you can display it in a table view and have some sort of navigation link to another another view, if you're in Swift UI, then you're good on the Swift front. Then you would work on more languages and develop that deep understanding of that, right? But a lot of people that are learning how to code are not there yet. So what they need to do is they need to stick to one language and one language only and get really, really good at that. Because what you need to understand as well is it's going to take a while for you to get competent anyway. And that's going to be the amount of time that it's going to take for this recession to kind of die down and job market to start picking up again. Right. So take this time, take this advantage to focus on your learning rather than to get a job. Right. So if you guys enjoyed the video, Make sure you hit like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps support the channel and lets me know that you enjoy content like this. And let me know how the auto quality is because I got a new mic here. Just ordered it off Amazon. So if you like the audio quality, let me know. And if it's good, I'll keep it. If not, I'll just return it back to Amazon. But anyway, hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one.